Hey guys, welcome to week six, day two. We are gonna be focusing on the frog dissection. Today we're doing the first part, so we're gonna be looking at the external anatomy and pretty much the mouth. Okay, I'm gonna put some paper towels down because our frog is dark in color and it's kind of hard to see it against this dark background. So we are going to be looking at the American bullfrog. So here's our lovely specimen of American bullfrog. The American bullfrog and all frogs are amphibians, so they are cold-blooded and they typically lay their eggs in the water. The body plan of an adult frog is generally characterized by a stout body, so a shorter body, super short body here, uh, protruding eyes, our uh, got, well, I don't know if it's a boy or girl, we'll get there, but our frog has uh, one protruding eye and one that is somehow retracted. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Let me see if this will show up a little bit better. So you can see protruding eye and a retracted eye. I don't know what happened there. Um, and they have limbs that are usually folded underneath of it. This one is uh, ready to be dissected, so it is not folded underneath it, but you know how a frog typically sits. And then they also have the absence of a tail in adults. Besides living in fresh water or on dry land, the adults of some species are adapted for living either underground or also in trees, which I'm sure you've heard of a tree frog before. Okay, we're gonna focus on the external anatomy for a few moments. So the four legs, which are the um, front legs up here, they are composed of four sections. The upper arm, so here is our upper arm, the uh, forearm, the wrist, and then its hand. The hind legs, the things that people fry up and eat because it has the most muscle. I wonder why there's so much muscle here on these uh, hind legs. Hint, hint, question. Uh, anyways, they are composed of the thigh, and so here's the top part of our leg here, the thigh, the um, lower leg, the ankle, and then the webbed foot. They do not have claws. It looks like these are clawed, but they are not claws. These are just its webbed toes. Okay, so one of the first things I want to point out here is how the heck do you tell if this is a male or a female frog? Such a wonderful question. Um, in order to tell, one of the things you can look at is its thumbs. So a male frog is going to have these um, enlarged thumbs. So here, so are, is this going to be a male or a female? I mean, we can t at this point, we're just hypothesizing because the, the frog does not have any external reproductive parts. Uh, and the other thing to notice, which we only have this one frog, so we don't have comparison here, but the females are typically larger than males. So I will show you a picture of the enlarged thumb of a male frog compared to a female frog here. Okay, let's take a look at its skin and its coloring. Uh, frog skin vary in color from very well camouflaged, dappled brown, gray, and green to vivid patterns that can be really bright uh, red or yellow and black to advertise toxicity or even worn off predators. Camouflage is one of the frog's biggest defense mechanisms and most of the camouflage frogs are nocturnal. So during the day, they seek out a position where they can blend into the background and just kind of remain undetected. I don't know if you've ever been like when like when you're younger, especially in the summertime, you're playing outside and you're playing like hide and seek or something with a whole bunch of neighbor kids. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, look at all these frogs because they are, um, they are nocturnal. Something really cool about the skin of the frog is that oxygen can pass through it because it's a permeable uh, membrane. So this is going to allow them to remain in places without access to air, um, such as underwater, uh, where, so they can respire or breathe through their skin. So for their skin to serve as this respiratory organ, it has to remain moist. So this makes it, um, so this is a good thing and a bad thing, like, oh, you know, like a double-edged sword here. It's awesome that it can breathe through its skin, but could be a problem if they are in like toxic sewage or um, some type of environment where their 
they're breathing through their skin because they're not using their lungs um, and they have to stay moist, but there are toxins in the um, aqueous environment they are in because they could be susceptible to various substances they may encounter from the environment. So it could be toxic, it can dissolve, into, can dissolve in the water film and then be passed on into their bloodstream, which would, you know, uh, not be good for the frog. And this could be actually an underlying cause of the worldwide decline in frog populations. So there are glands located all over the body that are going to um, excrete mucus to help keep the skin moist. And it's also going to reduce evaporation. Some of the glands on the hands and chest of males are specifically specialized to produce these sticky secretions um, to aid in um, amplexus, which is the mating position in which the male is going to clasp onto the back of the female. So if this is a male, and if these are indeed enlarged thumbs, there, there are these um, secretions that could come out here of these uh, right here and to help them kind of stick onto the back of a female. Remember, the male is lar or smaller than the female, so that's kind of what's going to be going on there. Okay, two protruding eyes. This one, for some reason, only has one. The other one is like down in there. Something else happened. Not quite sure. Um, so they usually have protruding eyes under the outer eyelid is the inner lid and this is called the nictating membrane uh, kind of creepy looking and it's colorless and it doesn't open but it's going to provide this extra layer of protection for whenever the frog is swimming I'll give you another picture of the nictating membrane in just a moment creepy rip, rip, rip. All right, behind the eyes, ooh, almost dropping my frog here. Behind the eyes, there is a circular region right here. You can see that. It's a little bit lighter in color here. It looks kind of like brownish copper. Um, it's a circular region. And it's tightly stretched skin, and this is called the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. Males is usually larger than their eyeballs, which in this case, it doesn't look like it's larger than the eyeball. So maybe this is a female. Um, and it's going to allow the frog to hear in the air as well as like below water. So underwater they can also hear. Anterior to the eyes, so like in front of the eyes, there are two openings called the external nares. So, oh, sorry, I'm pulling it closer to me. External nares, you can see here is one and here is the other. Oh, sorry, so I'm picking its nose or its nostrils, okay? So I'm gonna start cutting at this point. So that is basically the outside. The ventral part of the frog is way lighter in color. It's not like you see a frog lying there belly up. That would be not a good thing for the frog, um, especially in terms of camouflage. So I, we're gonna take a look at the mouth. So I need to use my scissors and my scalpel because the mouth is, uh, I'm gonna use my probe is basically like stuck here. So here's the mouth. You can start to see like that is definitely the tongue, but we're, it's, it's definitely like stuck here. So I need to make some cuts. Okay. This thing is a little bit slippery. Hoping you can see everything that we want to see here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look inside the mouth here. So the tongue is the, the frog's most noticeable feature here. Here's the tongue. It's called a cleft tongue. Do you see this shape here? It is the shape of a cleft. Therefore, it's called the cleft tongue. It's attached at the front of the mouth. So if I turn this sideways, let me turn it this way here. You'll see it's flappy in the back and it's attached in the front. Unlike ours, our tongue is attached in the back and flappy in the front. Hmm, kind of interesting, right? But that's one of its adaptations of how it's going to get its prey. Bring it close here so you can see that again. So flappy in the back, 
attached in the front of the mouth at the base. Okay, so we're gonna look for two openings at the back of the floor of the mouth. If they are there, then those would be the vocal sacs, which are only present in males. I'm actually wondering. I do not see these vocal sacs. So I'm thinking that this is not a male because I don't see the vocal sac openings. I could be wrong though because in the past they have tricked me. Okay, so I don't see any vocal sacs. They would normally be uh, right here and right here and I don't see them. Um, so frogs are gonna produce a wide range of vocalizations, particularly in their breeding season because they're looking for their mate. Uh, they can also exhibit many different kinds of complex behaviors to attract mates, to fend off predators, and well, generally just to survive. So we're not quite sure if this is male or female, but I do not see these vocal sacs, so I know what I'm going to guess this to be. All right, vomarine teeth. These are um, teeth that are at the very front and center at the roof of the mouth. I'm going to show you this. They kind of look like little mouse chompers. Right here. Right there, those are the vomarine teeth. They are um, very hard, uh, and there's only two of them. The other thing I want to point out, which you can't really see, but if you were here, you could feel right along the top of the jawline here, there are maxillary teeth. So right along here, maxillary teeth. My glove's probably in the way. And with my probe, I can feel it. It's like a, just like a ridge line. On either side of the back of the mouth, there are these eustachian tubes. So right here, oh, sorry, pulling it closer to me. Here and here, I'm putting my probe. These are eustachian tubes. Now, eustachian tubes are pretty cool and we actually have these as well. Uh, they are going to um, equalize pressure. So when the frog is swimming, um, if it goes really low, like if you're ever in a swimming pool and you go with the deep end, you're like, oh my gosh, my ears are popping. That's kind of what these are doing. They are equalizing the pressure. Uh, so the ears are going to pop and like, you're not going to go kind of all crazy here. Um, scuba divers, there's like, you, you can't just like go all the way down to the bottom of the ocean or wherever you're going very quickly. You have to take the time to equalize the pressure or really bad things could happen. Um, if you're on an airplane, you're, you're, you'll notice like your ears popping all because of the pressure. Okay, internal nares, so the internal like nostrils, are located anterior to the vomerine teeth, which are actually right here on either side. Boop, boop, boop. Do you see that there and there? Those are the internal nares. And then there are two large bulges, which you can clearly see though. Okay, so as a reminder, those two large bulges are the eye sockets here and here. Okay. All right, there is a slit like opening. No, how am I going to be able to get this here? Oh, yeah, you can see it. Uh, right here, this slit like opening here. That is the glottis and it's going to lead to the lungs and then um, the esophagus which is like right behind it not going to be able to see that till I actually open up some more oh there's some food in there Get some of that out um, the esophagus is behind the glottis back here oh sorry back here and that is going to carry food from the mouth to the stomach all right so that's pretty much the mouth all right um, adult frogs generally have a carnivorous uh, diet consisting of small invertebrates um, and there are some that are kind of a little bit more omnivorous so they're gonna have um, meat and plants in their diet and some are just going to feed on fruit, but that's not typical. 
So the maxillary teeth that are on this upper jawline here, these maxillary teeth, um, they're used to hold food before it's swallowed. So they're very weak and they, they're not used to chew up their prey um, or to like, or even catch and harm agile prey. Instead, the frog uses its sticky tongue to catch flies. So it's gonna use its tongue to catch flies and other small moving prey. The tongue normally lies coiled in the mouth and it's free at the back. Remember how I said like it's like flappy in the back, back here? So, um, and, and it's attached up here at the front at the mandible. Um, so what's gonna happen is it can be shot out and retracted at a pretty pretty good speed. And some frogs, they actually don't have any tongues and they, they just use their hands to kind of like shove food in their mouth. Um, so the teeth are mainly used to just grip the prey and keep it in place until the food is swallowed whole, which is kind of crazy. And then here's this, ready guys? The eyeballs, so here's the eye sockets. They are going to help push food down the throat. So they can be retracted through the skull and help push food down the throat or down the esophagus, which is like super cool, kind of crazy here. All right, so once again, uh, this is a fro uh, American bullfrog. We do not know if it is male or female just yet because they do not have external reproductive um, parts. Uh, however, there are a few clues that we could use um, to determine if this is male or female. The first one, being um, if this is larger than another one, then this would be a female because the females are typically larger than the males. The enlarged thumbs, so are these really enlarged thumbs or are they not? If they are enlarged, then it would signify, signify that this is a male frog. Uh, the larger tympanic membrane, so in this case, this tympanic membrane or eardrum is not bigger than the eye, so um, that would signify that this is a female, but once again, we will see. And then lastly, the vocal sacs in the mouth, which we did not see any vocal sacs. However, they are sometimes very difficult to see, so um, we did not see any vocal sacs on the floor of the mouth in the, in the back there. All right, tomorrow we will begin looking at the internal anatomy um, and we will make a cut down here and open up the frog and take a look at digestive system as well as a few other things. All right, guys, that's it. Make sure you answer all your questions and that's it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.